Hey everybody, how's it going tonight? I want to say happy Thanksgiving to all my American friends. I hope you're doing good and then I hope you have a great time. Family time is very valuable and I hope you guys all enjoy. I really do. I'm jealous if you're eating turkey because I didn't get turkey this year. I got a, oh wait, what did I get? Roast beef, that's what it was. I was so angry because roast beef is like not good. I'm sorry, mom, but when you cook it, it's awful. <laughs> You guys remember when you were a kid, I don't know about your mom, but my mom would cook roast beef and would cook the shit out of it. And it would be so dry and just bleh. So now I don't ever get roast beef to cook. I won't even bother because I never liked it as a kid. And I don't want to screw that up and make it just as bad as my mom did. So I won't eat it. But she served roast beef and it was like a spiral ham. So yeah, she did have ham too. So me and my son and the rest of the family indulged on that while her and her boyfriend ate the roast beef. I was just like, nope. <laughs> Oh, all right. I got two videos for today. Um, they're both going to be sister wise videos that Katie had done. Oh, all right. Well, let's get into the first. Hey, everyone. It's Katie from Just Ball. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a wonderful day. It's Monday, November 21st, 2022. Do you ever get the feels when you're watching the Sister Wives and you see a relationship come to full circle and you get emotional watching this all play out in front of you? And it's about two friends that were once advocates. The feels. Um, I've already got something to say because since when? Does she ever get the feels? Ever. Unless it concerns her, she don't care about anything. Ever. Another thing I'm going to point out is, what is with this weird sucking on the teeth thing now? It's just weird to me. I've seen people do that before, and it wasn't um, a good reason for them doing it, if you know what I mean. Advocate our competitors, you realize and created this unique bond that will forever enmesh the two of them and make them best friends. And you watch that and you cry. Was that you and with were you crying when Chris, Christine, and Janelle were crying? Like, I'm not crying, you're crying, I'm not crying, you're crying, kind of thing. Yeah, that was me. So, this video is going to be about how. I don't believe that for a second. She is such a liar. There's no way in hell she's crying. I'm sorry, but no. She, every time she's apparently crying, which I've seen her try to do twice now, there's never any tears. Not one. So no, I do not believe you, Katie Joy. And Christine sit down to sort of talk about next moving forward for Christine and Janelle and Cody's relationship and where he has their relationship marked, which is probably in the same place he has marked with Christine because Janelle refuses to not take his side. So let's dive into this topic of Janelle and Christine sit down to have a conversation and J Cody and Janelle argue about the RV and moving forward in their marriage. Before we get into it, can you do me a big favor and, and give this video a thumbs up? Also, if you have not subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing. I mean, we are so excited. 200 and subscribes. And if you have something to say, so let's start here. Christine and Cody. That is, oh my, that is such pure shit. Now she's at 290. Are you kidding me? You do not go up exactly 1,000 subs every single day. You just don't. I'm telling you, you don't. Anybody with common sense, a brain, would know somebody is buying subs here. Christine and Janelle get together to sort of talk about and tie up the loose ends before Christine moves to go to Utah. When they sit down, one of the first topics they actually address has to do with Cody and the hostility that he actually expressed towards Christine when they all sat down as a group only a week or two before. And 
Christine actually said that they both actually said that, that Cody's response and his reaction was shocking. Uh, Janelle was surprised to see him react in the way that he did. She said that he has been at, at a level of anger and emotion that has just been so to the like boiling point. She doesn't think that he's dealing with his emotions. She sort of described the situation as him, you know, just releasing all of that anger. But Christine kind of described it more as like, she expected to hurt people. She expected that people would have hurt feelings, but she didn't expect the volatility that she received and got from Cody. It was a jarring conversation because it was evident that Janelle was not on board with the way that Cody behaved, but she fell short of calling what he did volatile. Maybe it's okay, he needs to express our emotions. Like then he lost it. He was so shocked at his aggression. And I was expecting people to be hurt. I didn't know that he'd be volatile. And how to express it, unfortunately, it sort of came out like, it surprised me because he was so loud and he was so angry. Janelle was surprised. She couldn't understand that he was so angry. This is one thing I don't understand about her. Why does she tell word for word what the clip is, make us watch the clip, and then afterwards, re say about what the clip is again, word for word. She's robotic. I mean, people can come to their own conclusions, Katie Joy. I think you should just play the clip. Sure, give your input, but it, there's no point in you showing the clip if you're just going to say it word for word because exactly what you just said is what happened. And I just don't feel it was necessary to even look at that clip because she's already said what they said. You know what I mean? It's just like, being told three times what's in that clip. <laughs> like, what the hell? We get it. Christine, volatile. I feel like Janelle, because she's still with Cody, is giving him a lot of passes. And I don't believe this is the first time he's acted this way. I don't think it's the first time he'll ever act this way. I think this is how he acts. I don't know. I think they're just good at like excusing it. Like, he doesn't know how to handle his emotions. The man is 54 years old. He's not a toddler that can't regulate his feelings. He's not a teenager that doesn't have a developed frontal cortex. He's a 54-year-old man that should know how to control his rage, but he didn't. And that's not an excuse. I mean, sometimes we yell about abuse in front of the whole nation is, it's not just like surprising, it's disturbing. But that's just my opinion. After they had that conversation, she quickly like, like switched the... Well... Well, in my opinion, your opinion sucks. You're so quick to blame Cody for everything and anything. You have such a hatred for him and especially Robin. That's what I see. And that's what I hear coming out of her mouth every single time. She talks about the same situation over and over and over and over. It's irritating. It really is. And I don't like it how she constantly uses the word abuse. Because every time I hear that word, I think physical. And then she's talking about trafficking. And then she's talking about being, um, oh, what the hell did she say about the women? Grooming, women grooming other women. She's dangerous. I mean, you just can't say these things. You just can't. To like Robin, Robin seemed to take Christine saying that she wanted space as a rejection of both her and her kids. And uh, Christine felt terrible about that. She that her and her kids she didn't mean it that way like trying to cut them space and it wasn't about the kids it was about robin um and she said that after the fact she realized she could have changed what she said there obviously you know robin made herself the victim in that situation the next part of the conversation is incredibly awkward and it's very clear that they're having to have this conversation for the cameras but you know janelle what Robin made herself the victim. The victim of what? More ac accusations that you're throwing out there, Katie Joy? You need to get that wonky eye fixed. Something is clearly wrong with you medically. You need to go to a doctor. You know, tomorrow's Thanksgiving, like I said, for everyone in the States. We all saw what happened last year with Katie Joy. My hope, I know it won't happen. I actually, I'm not even going to say my hope because I know it's not going to be true. What I would want is for that child to see his family on either side, her side or his father's side. 
grandparents, something, anything, get out of the house and spend time with your family. But no, because Katie Joy likes to post on the internet that her family is abusive. So no, she won't go see her family because she likes to make up lies and bullshit. That's awful. I could never do that to my child. relationship just like very clear that you know they've always had this common bond of being sister wives and now that's changing so what does it become the core of their relationship had always been around been around cody so now does it change to like the shared experience does it change to like the kids in our lives and forward and christina's just like flat out like i think it's deeper than that like i think you're like my best friend and and i was like oh I think that's even more, I think it's deeper than that for you and I. I would consider you one of my best friends. I don't know. I don't know. No, Janelle didn't necessarily respond and say like, yes, you're my best friend too, because I think Janelle has to play it very even. But it's clear that Janelle is struggling with Christine leaving. And I think she's struggling with what does this mean because you're leaving? Because I don't think she wants to give up Christine. And I think the others are going to give up Christine and she feels that's a choice. She's very clear about that and doesn't think that anyone should have to make a choice. You know, Mary doesn't think they're sister wife, which is fine. And Christine doesn't know necessarily. But then I really want to be with Christine and her kids at the holidays. And that's why you relate to Cody so much, because you literally make yourself literally the victim in everything. I honestly feel bad for Janelle because, yeah, she's staying in that, staying in the lifestyle with Cody and she's losing Christine. And apparently what it looks like to me is that, yeah, they are very close. Christine just said she feels like that's her best friend. You know what I mean? I do feel that there she's you know Janelle's in like a rock between a rock and a hard place. I feel bad. I feel bad for the whole family. Um it, you know it just didn't work out that way though. Got to move on. Victim. Janelle's going to be very neutral. She doesn't want to take Cody side. I think she's in a difficult position. Because Cody anything that she does him. And he's he win. When are you begging her for a closer relationship? Like when? When you're yelling at her about the RV, when you're yelling at her about Garrison and Gabriel, like when are you yelling at her for a closer relationship at all? Except for just yelling at her. And she won't bend to your demands. So then it creates this like mess. And Janelle's just, you know, doesn't know what she's gonna do. She just wants to be in the middle. And Christine, for her part, doesn't want her to pick a side, either side. See, now she's just making shit up. Janelle does not want to be in the middle. Clearly, she doesn't. Obviously not. She doesn't want what's going on to happening. She doesn't. And like I said, I actually feel really bad for her. So no, she doesn't want to be in the middle. Why would you say she wants to be in the middle when she... <laughs> Whatever, Katie. Keep lying. to be a challenge either way and i think christine will respect it i don't know if cody will after they talk, talk about all of that talk about and how cody is truly only going over there for like a couple of weekend and she's never stayed the night and she doesn't think that he'll she'll want to spend the summers down in flag in flagstaff because she's never spent a night away from her mother and she you know and cody's like there's gonna come a time when i'm gonna have to travel for her because christine might not ever down to flagstaff and you know he's trying to like blame christine for the relationship that he has with truly but the, the, the facts are, is he missed out on years with Billy and he has no one to blame but himself. So that's all said and done. And after that, we go over to the RV, right? So Cody's being rejected by Christine, right? Or by Janelle. That's his story. I'm being rejected. So he's going to now use that as a means to say that this RV is the reason why he's struggling. And the why it's because they don't have a space for their family. And they argue about leveling. They are about why she should be. And it's it's kind of ugly, to be honest. We're arguing. 
romantic relationship. It is not a fiction just or really in this relationship as we communicate with each other about this stuff. Cody, like, and her are trying to level this thing that's supposed to self-level, by the way. And he's getting so mad at this. And she's recognizing that what he's doing isn't working. So she makes a suggestion to try to move it forward and instead of doing what he's doing. And he doesn't like anyone disagreeing. With him is she just doesn't care and she's done with his foolery. He also admits that, like, all of this, he admits, he admits to pushing her and he admits that it's because he's unraveling in plural marriage. Him. So he's keen things out on her for Christine. And then he's mad that she bought this RV without talking to him because it's a large purchase. And then he's mad that she didn't go look at rentals because why did she need to be out there to begin with? And he's just like mad at literally every single decision she's made and I'm consulting him about what she wants to do. That's realistic. To me, it just seems like Janelle's one foot out the door, honestly, and doesn't care. But her response, if I were to leave up to what happened because he's not around, he's not in tune. I Told him I wanted this RV. I told him that I was going at getting an RV. He just didn't listen to me. I think like he thinks he's more involved than he thinks more time alone. They recognize they don't get the time he is. He, they don't get. I think KJ psycho. Do you guys not get the feeling that? Well, I don't even think it's a feeling. You can clearly tell by her facial expressions and the way she talks about this. She hardly even breathes when she talks. She's way too obsessed with this family way too obsessed. She's going on every day, all day, making videos about the same subject over and over and over and over. The reason why I'm making my videos on her is so you guys don't have to give her a review and you get to see this and a little bit of commentary on the side, which hopefully helps because she's irritating as hell. And the lies can't do with it. time with him they don't get time with him and then when he's there he's not there it's like 30 thoughts going on in his head but he blames them for everything he never takes it take it like make some i don't know tell your spouse but she says they had conversations but these are in the now we're all here. Like Cody doesn't even know what he wants. So she's talking about going to an apartment. She's going to pick a place. She's going to do it without me. She's going to figure something out like that. Like she's already got a place that she knows about. Well, I mean, I basically decided what I needed to do for me. And I just sort of decided and I did it. And he sort of had to be along for the ride. But if I would have waited for him to solve the problem, it never would have gotten solved. He's mad about her now wanting to move in because then he's like, well, why did we get the RV to begin with? And now he, she wants to get a rental, but he's mad about that. And her argument is I had to do this for me and he had to be able I love how she likes to make everything bigger than what it is. Oh, he's mad about this. He's mad about that. He's volatile with this. He's this and that. I see people talking to a camera. They're on a television show. And then he's not mad all the time like she says he is. And volatile all the time. And abusive and this and the other thing. I think she just takes things and she runs with it. She has her own narrative. <laughs> and then you got people who actually believe her bullshit. That's what I see. along for the ride and if i would have waited for him nothing would have come of it and i started to think about his neighbor who it took him two years to do the cistern cody just doesn't like to finish projects and i think that's a way to control people like he doesn't finish things to control the situation or he doesn't have the money the resources or the time or the effort or the care or the concern or he's distracted there's a reason why he's not doing what he does but if anything this whole scenario with the rv and this whole argument about this property and this whole argument about the build and the whole decision of like lashing out at her because of Christine leaving tells me. Here we go again with the lies. He's not lashing out at Janelle at all. And now she's saying that he won't build on the property because he doesn't care um, because it's for control now. Seriously, KJ, get a fucking job. that his relationship with her is only going to get more and more sour and next week they argue about buying christine's house because the offer falls through and she doesn't want to buy the house and they're like literally yelling at each other and we're going to see in other episodes where they start arguing about them not partnering well and she tells him to f off and walks away there's rumors that she's left and that she was forced to leave and there's rumors that she doesn't 
you know, she's not left. There's so many different rumors, but I will say this, like one woman leaving isn't an excuse to like hurt the other, but he's going to hurt her because one, Janelle, because Janelle's friends with Christine and two, because she makes decisions without consulting him. But Janelle, for her part, is neglected by him. He has no interest in her. Even though she has a minor child at home, Savannah, during this period, he doesn't care about her. And he blames her for not having a space for them to nurture their relationship. He blames her for not doing what they need to have a good relationship. It's always her fault. He blamed Christine. He blamed Mary. Maybe these women just wake up and realize, I want more and I'm going to do what I want. And Janelle, I hope, will continue to move forward and realize she's worth more because she's now the scapegoat, if anything, here. So she won't dispute Christine. She agrees he's a, and it shocked her, but she also agrees that he doesn't care or put the time and effort to solve her problems. I think she's loyal to the wrong person. Decide. Tell me what your thoughts are in the comments below. Bye, guys. I've actually checked her comment section and there is no point in saying anything. There's not one negative comment. If there is one, in five seconds it's gone. But yeah, before I even get to them, they're gone. There's no there's no negative comments whatsoever. No, that's not allowed. God forbid you go against KJ. See how she elaborates on stuff and then just clearly makes shit up? That's... <laughs> wow. And she gets away with it. All right, we're going to do the second video, and this one is titled, um, let's see here, Janelle Brown shakes an anger ball, fighting with Cody about not wanting to buy Christine's home. This video that she just did literally didn't need to be done. We already know all this. We've already heard this a million times. She just needs to back off. Like, this isn't even news anymore. Her views are down, and this is why. She has no content. She has no sources. All right, let's do it. When it comes to gifting, here's the It's lovely. Hey everyone, it's Katie from Without a Crystal Ball. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a wonderful day. It's Tuesday, November 22nd, 2022. We have a lot to talk about today and we're going to get right into it on a brand new clip that was released by T uh, TLC to Entertainment Tonight. And it's an argument between Mr. Cody Brown and Miss Janelle Brown about their property. And She's sick in the head. Look how excited she is because people are in pain. Every single time. She makes a video. She is in her glory because people are hurting. Wow. You're a real winner, Katie. Make another disastrous financial choice by purchasing a home she can't afford so that she then can build a home that she can't afford because she can't afford both. And then Cody's going to gas gaslight a rational Janelle who has logical reasons for why this is a horrible idea. But Cody's going to claim. She's a piece of shit. That right there is why she should lose her fucking channel. I can't, I can't stand that conniving little bastard's face sitting there smiling and loving the fact that people are actually in pain and hurting. And people are fighting. She loves it. Anytime she gets to talk about Cody and Robin and bash them, she's loving this. That is disgusting. That's sadistic. She's a sadistic fuck. That's what she is. Claim that this is her just arguing. Uh, can you imagine what it's like to live in the world of Cody Brown, filled with confusion, uh, paranoia, and delusions, and then try to have a rational conversation with a man that wants to always keep you unbalanced and in a way of like not knowing up from down? I would imagine this is how he keeps his wives so obedient. That's just my two cents. Obviously, Christine has left town, and so now they have to deal with this home that's left by Christine, which had been under contract, but apparently has been left without a buyer. And because of that, Cody has this harebrained idea that Janelle is going to buy the house that Christine owns, which actually isn't too far away from Coyote Pass. But Janelle has other ideas because she doesn't believe and she knows that she can't qualify for a home and to build. She wants to focus her resources on a construction loan, but Cody doesn't want to do that because he's impatient and he somehow thinks. See what I mean? Look at her face. That is not right. 
that's not normal for somebody to love the fact that other people are hurting. I just can't get over this. And look, it's not nice making fun of people's appearance, appearances. I get that. But because this girl right here has done it to everybody and anyone that she's ever come across, she's an asshole. And I will say right now, her. let me know if I'm wrong, but she, her receding hairline is even worse in this video. Holy shit. Like, it's going back far, really far. That shampoo she got, you know, for hair loss and hair thickening, it's clearly not working because it's even worse today. That's awful. This was done Tuesday, this video that she made. I don't know. I'm just, she actually fucking thinks that she is beautiful. She thinks she's gorgeous and that this is what she thinks she's pretty. No, she looks fucking nuts. That helped Combs out and make money. Cody Brown thinks he's going to be the Jim Bob Duggar of Flagstaff and buy properties and rent. Okay, no, Jim Bob buys really dilapidated rundown and stuff. There's also a Duggar video coming up soon, so hang on tight for that. So we'll dive into this latest clip of jo uh, Cody Brown making Janelle the scapegoat. And before we do, listen, we're getting super close to our goal of 300,000 subscribers. In fact, we're 11,000 away, and I cannot wait to get there. I was actually just noticing that one of my videos had 340,000 views, and I thought, geez, if half the people actually watching subscribe that aren't subscribed, I would have reached my and regular she's freaking me out what the fuck is she on oh my god ring the bell by clicking the bell and you'll get notifications and always leave some comments if you have something to say this clip is kind of a doozy and i don't believe it's actually the the meat of the argument because they barely argue but it's an example of Cody's extreme gaslighting. And if you know anything about gaslighting, people just, and projection with narcissists, is they will make you believe that your reality is not your reality and confuse you by shifting the goalposts and making you think things that aren't true. And you'll make them, you'll be confused by what's real, what's fake. And they're going to and argue. She's got that down pat, eh, guys? You want to know why? It's because she is a narcissist and she does gaslight people. Everything that she says about Cody, that is her. To a T, 100 percent. With them is damn near impossible because once you decide that you have the argument for their point that's rational, they'll change the, the argument altogether. And that's what happens here. <laughs> Cody Brown. He's also decided that the new scapegoat is Janelle. So let's dive into this new clip. We buy the house, we build on Coyote Pass, you move into that house, we rent this house. That's the plan with Robin's house. This is my heart. I want a house. I'm ready to be settled in my own house. Yeah, but we're a year from that, even if we start building right away. Yeah, I just, but Cody, I don't think I can do both. One of the difficult things that nobody prepares you for when you actually build a house is this like transitional period where you might have to actually live in a rental or live in a home other than your place while you're building because you need to have one home sold to qualify for the construction loan. I know this personally because we literally did this. We ended up having to sell our house and then we had to use the proceeds of the house for the construction loan to qualify, right? And then we moved into an apartment. Was it ideal? No. Was it necessary? Yes. Was it awesome living in a two bedroom apartment with our kit, with our son and our animals? And no, but we made it work because the long-term goal was to build the house that we're in today. House that we never plan to leave because we're too lazy to ever look for another home. And now here is saying, I don't want This pisses me right that F off too, because she used all the proceeds, yeah, from scamming people on Facebook. I've talked to the women in those Facebook groups. She has definitely, every time, like, she was in these groups, there's a few of them, there's at least four of them, and she was in all of them, and she would scam people for money. You know, one of them would be like, okay, well, my daughter who has autism or my daughter that has um, hydrocephalus or something similar to hers or the same as hers, they would say, you know, it's been a bad day. She go, oh, but no, 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 but mine's worse. Mine's off. Mine's worse off. Well, mine had to go to the hospital. Mine didn't sleep out. It's always KJ, 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 me, 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 I, I, I. And I have been told, I have conversations with people. That's exactly what she does. She was getting donations. She was getting gifts. And all this money that she scammed from on McDonald, Gabby Petito, and all these women on the internet, that's where the proceeds came from to build her fucking dream home that she's too lazy to move out of. That right there is a scam artist and a liar. I want to build. Logical. 
Cody's like, we're going to do what we're doing with Robin's house. Illogical. I don't think they'll ever be able to do what they want to do because they have a huge mortgage over on Robin's house. Huge, by the way. And how are they going to qualify for then a million dollar construction loan for them to build another house in Flagstaff? They won't. Listen, Mouth, you don't know that it's a million dollars. The last video, you were saying it was $2 million that they needed, and you don't know because you don't know how big this house is going to be. You have no idea. At this point, I don't even think they know. They haven't done it yet. So for you to say they won't qualify for now a $1 million loan, like, piss off. Honestly, they have a really big mortgage. Who are you to say that? That is disgusting. Building on Coyote Pass. He hasn't done anything. But that's just my two cents. Yeah, Let's yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? What and he say? said it would be two years of renting this to somebody else. Oh, it's before, not a year. And he said you would have to rent it for two years before somebody would not count that mortgage towards your debt to income when you're trying to finance something else. And I don't want this. I don't want to get on the property. That's the whole reason I've been doing The award winning chef approved 30 times only on sale. Today we have been doing everything I've done. So Janelle went to their friend, Kelly, who's a real estate agent that's helped them with their builds and their buying properties or whatever they do in the area to get their opinion professionally about the idea of buying this home. So she basically took Cody's harebrained idea and tested this out by going to someone and saying, is this plausible? And they say to her, well, if you want to be able to afford this house and you don't want this mortgage payment to actually go against you for your, DT, your debt to income, meaning it's a qualified amount that she has to spend every single month per the amount that she makes. And you have to only have like, I don't even know, whatever percentage it is, 30% or 40%. And if you can't, if you don't want this to be a part of it, you have to have rental income for two years. Otherwise it's considered your home. And so she won't have a renter. And then Cody's like, oh, it's not a year. Well, but he wants her to own there and live there. He has no intention of renting immediately. He wants them to live there right now. Cody's rationalization here is actually irrational. He has no idea what he's doing. And he's literally not even thinking. He's not a very smart person when it comes to real estate. He's not a smart person when it comes to making financial choices. In fact, he doesn't think things through. He just gets ideas and decides this is what we're going to do, which is why they're in the financial problem. They have the financial problems that they do. Holy frig. Like, who the fuck died and made you God? Honestly, the way she talks about these people and how it's always, oh my God, she has got a raging boner for Cody. She will not leave this guy alone. Like, holy shit. That's crazy. We do. And when Janelle tries to test his theories, she proves them wrong. But of course, Cody will use that as a way to say that she's arguing. I still think you're not being open-minded. Okay, Cody, I talked to Kelly. I know. He says two years. So what? I'm not going to It takes a whole year to build. No, I'm not going to Well, no, Cody, the problem is I wouldn't be able to build. I can't even get a construction loan if I buy this house. Well, if Janelle wouldn't have bought the RV, she could have been able to afford the mortgage on Christine's house. If able to pull out, pay off the land this year, then why wouldn't we be able to actually just fund your construction next year? No. A few episodes ago, Cody said that they didn't have the money to pay off Coyote Pass, and now he's, like, propositioning that they pay off Coyote Pass. Literally literally and then let's pay off coyote pass this year then we'll fund your construction process next year you're gonna come up with like millions of dollars to buy this property to like to build the house really and did you like how he said that like he said so what to kelly's again where are you getting the millions of dollars from are you talking to this kelly person are you out there and jotting down on paper how much it will cost for them to build their house the house that they have no idea what the fuck they're going to build yet you don't know that so shut it rational argument because they're not being creative enough. they're not uh being open-minded to his harebrained ideas he has no explanation or argument of how they're going to fund these properties how they're going to pay for the construction all he wants to do is say that janelle was given bad advice and wrong advice and then he changes the, the like complete argument and says oh but if she would have just not bought the rv she could afford the mortgage that's not true that rv was like probably under a the mortgage or the, the loan he has out on, I guarantee near near the loan that would be sold for $700,000. A loan for $700,000, a loan for $100,000. You do the math, seven times the payment. Yeah. So if it's $1,000, it would be $7,000. I mean, I'm just being very basic. It wouldn't be that much for the house. But anyways, he's again, changing the arguments. Oh, now it's her fault for doing this. No, she would still not be able to fall. 
no, what do you find? The reason that we moved here was to build out there. We're simply just, just buying an asset. No, this really, he told me it sad. would be two years before I could apply, two years of rent. So where am I going to live for those two years that we're renting this? So she's like okay. trying to circle back to the reason why they moved in Flagstaff to begin with, to buy the prop, to buy and build on that property, right? To buy out the loan, build their houses. That was why he took them there for that property. That was the goal. Coyote Pass, that was the goal. They have gotten so far from Coyote Pass because it's super expensive to build there. I told you about everything we talked about with the neighbor and why this is very hard for them financially to swing this. And then on top of that, he's like, Oh yeah, I remember that video. You talking to the neighbor that doesn't exist. There's no way in hell somebody's talking to Katie fucking Joy. Nobody likes her. Why would anybody come forward and talk to some idiot YouTuber who's getting sued 24-7? I'm sorry, I don't buy it. Be purchasing an asset, an asset when you have a liability against it. An asset is something that you own without liability. You might have equity in a home, meaning that there's the difference between what the home would sale, sell for versus what you owe, but it's only an actual asset once you own it free and clear. They would never be able to afford the $700,000 to pay for that. They would not have an asset. They would have another liability, but he doesn't think things through. And he doesn't care. And then she's like, well, what are we going to do? Where would we live? If I have to rent this out for two years, where do I live during that time? Then what? Exactly. Exactly. It puts you further behind the eight ball again. And then Cody's going to go on about how he's just trying to be creative here. But what he's doing is just gaslighting her. She has every logical reason to do what she wants to do with the plan that she wants to do. And he is the one that wants to argue because it's not what he wants to do. So he's going to make her feel like her plan is stupid it's not logical. It's not practical. And he's going to gaslight her all the way through it. And they're fighting. And she's like trying to stand up to him. And he's just like mocking her. I'm just being creative and a little bit argumentative here with Janelle. The whole point is, is I want to get her into a home. Christine's house is here available and easy. I can be built in a year. I just, it, I see that we just lack creativity here. I understand what no, Kelly's I want, saying. I want to go forward with this build. The money build. I'd have to put as a down payment on this would basically almost pay off the land. No, I'm, I'm, we can do both. I just, I don't think so. Cody just flat pulled on himself. He literally said the reason why he's doing this and he's arguing with her is to wear her down so that he gets what he wants. He doesn't want to do her. Uh, no, Mouth, that's not what he just said was to wear her down. Nice try, though. Dealing with Coyote Pass. That's too hard for him to think about. It's easier. It's an easier, less time consuming option because he doesn't have to deal with the roads and the infrastructure and the wells and the cisterns and the water and the electricity and the everything that he has to do on that property plus the building expenses, right? But if he just buys the house, then it's over. He has a place to live for her. So what is, what is he doing? He's admitting I'm manipulating her to get what I want so that she'll do what I want by gaslighting her, making her feel like she's crazy, making her feel like she doesn't know what she's talking about, minimizing what she's doing. And she's so upset. You can see her finger shaking and she's so mad because she knows what he's doing is not true. She knows that she can Once again, mountains out of molehills. That's not what he said at all. Quit fabricating shit. If you're going to be a so-called reporter or a journalist, do your fucking job. We all know you're not, clearly, because nobody with that with a degree in journalism or who is a reporter would ever, ever act like you. Ever. Can't achieve her goal of building by buying this house. But he doesn't like that. She's fighting back. So he's saying, I'm being argumentative to get what I want. So he's admitting to manipulating her. He's admitting to beating her down through an argument to get what he wants. I hope that the sister wife actually go to a therapist that understands narcissism and domestic violence and abusers. And wow, there you have it, folks. I knew that was going to come out of that fucking mouth. Now it's domestic violence. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> oh my God, I can't wait till you get slapped with even more lawsuits because they're coming your fucking way. You are the most deserving person of lawsuits. Honestly, I don't give a shit if she loses her house. I don't fucking care. The only thing I care about is her son. At least somebody does. I know everyone out there does. But her? Nah. But she cared about her family, and she cared about her home, and she cared about her job, her so-called job, you know, her celebrity, celebrity reporting bullshit. She wouldn't be doing what she's doing. You cannot claim domestic violence like that. Wow. 
Coney may be a lot of things, but you can't just talk shit about people like that. Like, clearly, she loves being sued. <laughs> you fucking done it now, girl. Help these women see how he is them and making them feel unstable by using these tactics to get what he wants. Cody doesn't care about anyone but himself. Cody cares about the easiest path of resistance. He's never going to build on Coyote Pass. And he's going to make Janelle feel like she's the stupid one for not doing what he wanted when his plan will never get them there in the begin to begin with. But instead of telling her we're never going to build on Coyote Pass, he's going to let the pipe dream ex like stay out there because he can't tell her that it's not going to happen. He doesn't want to let her down. So he's going to make her think it can happen when it won't happen and create all these obstacles and roadblocks so that it never happens. It's disgusting. And if Janelle hasn't left by now, get out, Janelle. You deserve better. Tell me what your thoughts are in the comments below. Bye, guys. I'm just flabbergasted on that goddamn mouth of hers. As if she said that domestic violence, really? <laughs> oh my God, what an idiot. Wow. All right, you guys, I'm done with this for tonight. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section. I'd love that. And you know what? If you haven't already subscribed, I hate begging for subscribers or views or thumbs up. Whatever. It doesn't hurt to say sub to me, please. Actually, make sure you're sub to me, please, if you are and you think you are, because I just keep losing my subs. Who knows? Maybe it's me. Well, anyways, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.